Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us uh, for the FOMCA moments for April 2021. This is Lachey and Jenny. Uh, this banner here up at the top, this is taken from the FOMCA website. Uh, there's a URL where you can access all of the FOMCA moments, but we do encourage you to navigate to the Madison County Public Library website and uh, Shauna there at the, the public library, she posts our FOMCA moments along with other really cool things that are going on educationally throughout our community. But this month we have one of uh, many upcoming sessions and we wanna ask you, you got ferals? Yes, so feral cat colonies is something that a lot of us um, see happening around here in Madison County. So um, we wanted to take a little bit of time today to talk about what you can do um, if you have cats that are living around your barn um, in wood piles. Um, with Madison County being as rural as it is, there's lots of places for them to hide and shelter in. So we wanted to talk about some ways um, that you can help make sure that they are um, being cared for. Um, one of those efforts is in um, our trap, neuter, and release program. So if you have ferals living around your house, a lot of people like them living close to their home because they take care of the mice in the barns or they just provide company maybe for someone who's um, living by themselves. And we love animals here at FOMCA. That's why we do what we do. Um, so we are just looking to um, talk about why would it be important to care if a feral cat um, has been spayed or neutered. And one reason for that is that if they continue to just mate and um, repopulate at high, um, in high numbers, um, then that can cause um, a strain on the environment. It, you know, they're not necessarily um, always really healthy um, or they're starting to overtake an area in large numbers. Anything else, Lachey? Just that uh, inbreeding can happen, right. uh, you know, and especially we have a lot of rural areas, rural farms, lots of backwoods roads and communities that, um, you know, that have feral cat populations. And while, you know, people may believe that they're good to control like rats, rat mm -hmm. populations and stuff. And, and that is true. And uh, we at FOMCO would never want to actually take someone's cats. Right. Uh, we simply want to spay and neuter them and control the population and right. then return them so that, you know, if they, feral cats are accustomed to living in a barn, um, then they can go right back there, but they can live in a healthier way without spreading disease or, mm -hmm. um, you know, inbreeding can cause all kinds of health issues yeah. and, it, and leave a cat suffering. Yeah. Uh, and so. Uh, and also too, in addition to spay and neutering, um, here at Foam Co, we can also help when we bring them in to spay and neuter. We can also help make sure that they've got the appropriate vaccines um, and yes, like that, that they're, you know, maybe being treated for fleas and ticks if that's a problem with it so that they're not spreading diseases to each other or to other animals and livestock or people that you have near your home. And sometimes, Jenny, this can be a sensitive topic, especially we have a large elderly population in Madison mm -hmm. County, and we have a, a pretty large um, rate and poverty in our elderly yep. population. And many times, you know, if you know, an elderly person might be suffering from dementia or maybe even not, maybe if an elderly person is living alone, like you said, in isolation, that person may 
end up having many, many cats and they're not spayed and neutered. Um, yeah. And so this can be a real delicate um, conversation because um, many times um, that person may think, well, you're taking my pets, you're taking my animals. So if you are a neighbor or um, a family member of someone that kind of fits this um, description, you know, some of this criteria, yeah, this description, um, you know, reach out to the person and start approaching the topic gingerly uh, and, and just say, hey, we can, we can get some, some services to help your cats. Uh, there are services out there, people who can uh, get them spayed and neutered, um, help with food issues, help with flea and tick issues, get vaccinations, and then the cat can be returned home right, and, and right. be there to live, you know, um, in, in a healthier yeah. status than maybe what they did before. Yeah, and another thing in addition, so we've talked about that we can offer help with spay and neutering, we can offer help with vaccinations and maybe flea and tick treatments. Um, but we can also help um, if you need food um, to help provide for them to make sure that they're, you know, being well fed. Um, we can also help with that. So with that being said, we want to provide just some information, some facts about uh, trapping cats. Uh, I found a lot of really great information at AmericanHumane.org. Um, if you're interested to, to learn more about this topic. We have our trap neuter release, which is um, in the humane education for uh, animal welfare community. It's known as TNR. So with the trap neuter release TNR uh, protocol, efforts are made to trap the cat in a trap, such as in the image there. The cat is then taken to the Humane Alliance Clinic for spay neuter services, where they also get the vaccination, uh, the rabies vaccination. And then the cat is returned to the home location. Um, I also want to mention that depending on the individual situation, this process can often result in adoptions, if at all possible, and if the, the cat owner once, uh, let's say you have a large feral cat population and several of the, the mother cats have kittens, um, it is almost impossible to domesticate a feral cat that has lived its entire life uh, as a feral cat. Mm -hmm. However, with kittens, there is, a, they can be trained. They can uh, uh, be uh, domesticated and they are adoptable uh, in some instances. So that is always at the discretion of the owner, however. And um, once, you know, you reach out and let us know that there's an issue, we will begin working with you individually on the situation. And if it is a situation where you have kittens, just know that that, that is a possibility. Is there anything I missed on this slide, Jenny? I think you covered it. And like you said, just to reiterate, that is, um, we would talk about that with the owner on an individual basis. You may have some owners that want their cats returned. And then that's what we would do is work on spay, neuter, and releasing them back to your home. You may have some pet owners that say, this is getting overwhelming to me and I just don't want them all here. And I've got three mothers and they each have four or five kittens. And so we could look at maybe getting some of those kittens adopted out if that's what the owner wanted. So the next slide is on keeping your domesticated cat safe. So in, all, in addition to having the feral cat colonies, a lot of us um, like Lachey and myself have um, cats as pets that we often keep um, inside only or sometimes they may be inside outside cats. So we do know that of course um, cats who live inside only do tend to live longer lives than those that live predominantly outside. Um, but a lot of us because we live here in the beautiful mountains of North Carolina we do want to let them go back and forth to both. 
So if you're doing that, one thing to consider is um, keeping your cat safe around those feral cat colonies. So going back to um, if the cats are not spayed and neutered, then they can be mating. Um, they could be passing diseases or passing um, fleas that especially if your cat also comes inside, then it goes outside, it gets um, diseases and fleas and things like that. Um, and then brings it back inside and then that starts to affect the people as well. So um, we just want to make sure that, you know, not only the ferals are being spayed and neutered, but your pet kitty um, is having that opportunity also. Yeah, and just to tag on to that, um, it's always encouraged that cats wear appropriate tags and collars. Uh, just so uh, Jenny and I were talking this morning and uh, she said something that I, that I think we all have experienced living here. You look out the window and you say, huh, where did that cat come from? Right. Um, you know, outside. Is, that, is, my, that, is know, that a neighbor's cat or is that a feral cat? Yeah. Yes. So um, it, it's always an important to kind of take ownership uh, of your indoor cat so that it, it isn't mistaken as a feral cat uh, that's just wandering around. Uh, so, so it is important that cats wear tags, collars. Also, it is not expensive at all. You can reach out to us and we can, you know, direct you in the right direction for getting a vet to implant an ID microchip. The animal shelter might also assist in that. I'm, I'm not 100% sure about that. However, I do know you can call the FOMCA office and we can get you um, in the right direction to get one of those implants, ID microchips. I do know that Dr. Sheldon, um, our partner uh, veterinarian, um, she, along with other veterinarians in the area, she, uh, I brought my, my animals to her at the Marshall Island and she quickly implanted a microchip and then I went online and put my ownership information um, associated with that microchip. Also, she can even come to your house. She makes house calls and she can do that. So we just wanna make the case for TNR. There is a multitude of research that backs the case for trap, neuter, and return um, as the most effective solution for um, problems arising from feral cat colonies. So TNR stops the stress on animals for constant mating behaviors and pregnancy. This is an interesting fact uh, and a sobering fact. Once pregnant, a cat's gestation period is two months, allowing for a potential of five litters of kittens in one year. That's a lot. <laughs> that is a lot. Um, also, TNR stops male cat's behaviors, such as yowling, fighting and spraying. Um, Jenny mentioned earlier when we were, were discussing male cats um, that male cats will also often kill kittens to get to a female cat uh, who is in heat mm -hmm. and who may be avoiding mating because she's still nursing. Mm -hmm. uh, so that is another repercussion of just letting feral cat colonies go. It's just yep. inhumane, just, just their natural behavior um, that happens during mating season. Yep. Uh, I also want to put in a plug there for having a female feral cat that has a litter of kittens. If the, if the mama cat is still nursing, we cannot spay her immediately. Uh, so we, I, we do encourage you, number one, to reach out to us before any efforts to trap cats has occurred because Feral cats are smart, and if you put out traps for them and then you end up having to let them go without uh, getting the spay or neuter services, they will avoid that trap. So uh, you need to keep it new and fresh so yeah. that they don't know, so that they're caught by surprise. If they yeah. have been trapped before, they will know to avoid the trap. <laughs> also, yeah. they're smart like that. Yeah. Also, yeah. If, if the female is nursing, 
Um, it may be a situation where one of our FOMCA people come out, trap the mother and the kittens and wait so maybe that cat will be fostered in an area until she can wean the kittens then we can get her spayed and then we can return her yeah. and possibly get the kittens up for adoption, adoption mm -hmm. if that's what the owner wants if it's a situation where the owner says hey i want the mama cat back and i want the kittens back then we would have to wait the kittens would also have to be fostered until they're of age where it's safe to get them spayed and neutered. But um, as we've said all along during this presentation, we take those on a case by case uh, scenario. We will work with you individually according to what your needs are. Uh, I just wanted to put a plug in for those mama cats and kittens because the situation can carry out a little bit longer than just a trap uh, take to the clinic, have the surgery, the vaccinations, right. and then return back home, uh, which is the, the case if the cat is not um, nursing or is male. Yep. Um, yep. But also the cat's physical health improves after being spayed or neutered. The coat, their coat looks healthier, shinier, and they actually gain weight. So it's just healthier all the way around. Um, also, the fact that the cats are vaccinated against rabies is a huge plus. The cat population stabilizes. And also this uh, TNR uh, procedure provides an opportunity for outreach, especially in our most rural communities um, and education and cooperation. So um, there are supports in place to help you do this, and you are not on your own to just have to trap all these cats by yourself. So if you reach out to us at FOMCA, we actually have a FOMCA board member um, who is from Hot Springs. We have some others that she works with in different places in the county, but um, Ann Zook is very good about, she travels all over Madison County helping residents um, bring traps to them, our humane traps, um, showing them um, how those work and where those need to go. And then she will actually help you come back and collect those and get them to us um, here at Fonca so that we can get them to our veterinarians that we partner with to get them spayed and neutered. So if you have ferals, um, please call and know that we can support you and you're not on your own to have to deal with that. Um, yes, and adding to that, um, the FOMCA budget supports TNR efforts on an annual basis. And we could not make that happen. We are a nonprofit uh, organization and we could not make that happen without um, funding available from our uh, partners and our patrons, our community members, we rely on those funds to provide services like TNR. Um, for, and I also want to, to make everyone aware that, um, you know, our board members, we actively search out grant opportunities and there are hours uh, involved in writing up grants and then sending it to organizations like Petco Foundation. So when you come across the FOMCA website or you see the FOMCA um, on Facebook or other social media, and there is a shout out given to an organization like Petco uh, or, or Cold Noses or any other um, you know, uh, organization that benefits animals. That means that hours have gone into to grant writing, to pulling statistics for the, the types of situations that we have. Uh, you know, in this case for feral cat communities in Madison County and then, uh, we make a plea for funds to support our efforts to help in this area. Uh, a few months ago, Petco Foundation awarded us some money for spay and neuter. And so we immediately, you know, use that money for 
uh, situations where maybe residents in Madison County could not afford the, the, the surgeries and the vet care that was needed for, you know, their cats. And so those funds were used to help in those situations. Um, so, you know, we rely on funding for these services. We thank organizations like Petco for, you know, their grants to help pay for spay and neuter. It's been a blessing to us all. And we encourage you, please consider signing up for our FOMCA Cares initiative and get on our database list. This is a screenshot of our FOMCA website at FOMCA.org. And you can see right here on our homepage, we have an active link for Madison Cares. And so what happens is when you click on that link and you add your information to that list, um, and you know, that right there adds your name to a database that we can then turn around to our partner institutions like Petco and say, you know, we've got 236 um, residents on our database list and we will market and acknowledge your contribution to all of these folks. Also, you know, we have this many residents in our community who have actively signed up and said, yes, I want to support this nonprofit organization and the work they do in our community. So this just helps uh, FOMCA get better in the future for offering services that help the animals and the people of Madison County. Yeah, and, yeah. you know, if the internet is not your thing, if you, you know, uh, if this is all too confusing, please just give us a call. We can get your information entered on that website for you if that's a need. Um, our number is 828-649-9798. And Jenny, if there's not anything else, oh, and there is also a, a portal for you to make an individual donation to yeah. FOMCA. So if you are able, we are grateful mm -hmm. for anything that you are able to um, contribute to, to yeah. our mission. And uh, Jenny, if I haven't forgotten anything else, I think that's a wrap for today. I think that's a wrap. All right. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. And we'll uh, talk again soon next month.